Hello and welcome back to Educator.com's course on music history. Today, brace yourself, serialism. It's nothing to do with serial. I thought it did at some point. I thought it would be really cool to learn serialism with like Cheerios or Rice Krispies, but fortunately, no. Okay, serialism is this sort of daunting, scary concept and tool to learn about um, from a music theory standpoint and from a music history standpoint. So what I hope to do in today's lesson is really just take some of that fear out of it for you, give you some historical context, and let you know that it's all right. It's, it's okay. It's serialism. Okay, so the rules are have an open mind and ears. And don't let it intimidate you. Please don't let it intimidate you. It's not as complex as it's made out to be. History lesson time. Hey. Okay, it's a history course. End of the 19th um, century, as we've talked about, there is a lot of uh, experimentation. We had opera experimentation with the Expressionists that you just learned about, um, Strauss, and then leading into these guys, Schoenberg, um, Berg, and others actually who end up writing operas. But regardless, we also had Wagner and Wagner pushed um, the extreme of, of tonality, of, of actual tonality. So he, he just really pushed that bar and also um, had a lot of harmonic shifts. So the whole concept between what Wagner was doing is essentially to uh, blur tonality to make it as um, difficult to ascertain where one, you know, tonic is as possible. Um, Debussy did this as well with Impressionism, and he used a lot of different scale sets. We learned about the whole tone, the pentatonic, the octatonic, all the other modes. The whole point behind those, again, same as Wagner, same as Strauss, blur the lines of tonality. So, at this time, Schoenberg and others went into Expressionism.